throughout quarantine, we're all trying to figure out a way to stay creative, uh, finish our or accomplish our goals and occupy our kids. My guest today has done all three of those things with one task. Joaquin Figueroa, thank you for being here on the Chris Kanye Show. How's it going? Hey, brother. Thank you for having me, man. It's great. It's nice to have a fellow podcaster here. Yeah, yeah. The Asylum Podcast. Go ahead and listen to that and uh, Insensitive Culture. Yeah, please check those out. Uh, you're a local guy. Obviously, I'm a fan of local podcasts and and podcasting and using it as a, a creative tool and a business tool. And even if you want to just kick it with your friends and, and talk crap, you know, everywhere in between, it's a great uh, thing that we have in our lifetime. And I'm, I'm happy to, that, to share that love with somebody uh as a guest here on the show so hell yeah man this last year uh, i've only been doing it for it's coming up on a year and uh i've learned a lot um you know i found a passion for it a love for it it's been really really great it's been an experience i've got to meet a lot of good people so um y you know and it challenges you if you're looking for a challenge and you're naturally like not really introverted, but not very extroverted either. Mm -hmm. uh, I would suggest that you give it a shot, and that would, you know, give you a reason to reach out to people and learn a few things. You know, yeah, and it's it could be anything you want. It, it's it's amazing because we have the internet in our generation, and you could if you want to learn about dinosaurs and the dental history of <laughs> uh, uh, people from a, a specific part of Asia, you can have those could be two episodes, and you yeah. can find an expert on both of those. Yeah, and um, not only that, but it's fun trying to. Discuss discover what it is that you want to talk about. Um, a, a lot of people have been asking me for like uh, any kind of advice on what their subject matter should be. And really, I just tell them, hey, record. Even if you don't put it out there, record it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you'll you'll tend to find like a subject matter within the things that you speak about when no one's listening. And then just go off of that. Yeah, you got to talk about what you're interested in first. Um, and then if you want to start getting... Uh, let me think about this. If you want to start getting smart about it you yeah. find a way to make it interesting to other people too oh for sure so if you're interested in a topic talk about it talk about it talk about it become your own expert on it in a way and then be like okay how can i make this interesting for somebody who might not google this while they're on the toilet you know? right <laughs> you know what i mean right not only that but um you know you just kind of have to you just kind of have to challenge yourself every day in life anyway sure. you know what i mean and then you never know anything right off the bat you know, mm -hmm. I, what the hell did I know about writing a, a children's book, right? right? So we just, we do things and then we just fine tune it. We, re, you know, repeatedly work on it and and then we ask for advice. You know, sure. that's literally the, the things that I did both with the podcast and with, uh, you know, writing a children's book. It's mm -hmm. And that can go for anything in life. Like the information is out there. There's a, a, a ton of information in the world. You just have to know what you want to do in order to ask the right people and, and look for the right sources. And it's funny because once you start becoming the person who knows the stuff, mm. people ask you things and you don't realize how much you've learned yourself until you start to give the quote unquote advice to others. Right. How does this microphone work? Or where do you post this podcast? Or what's the best way to post on Facebook if you want to show an excerpt of your show or whatever? And you're like, you just know the answers out of nowhere. Yeah. It seems out of nowhere, but really it's because you've been obsessed with whatever you're doing, even if it's something like fitness. What's a great bicep workout? Oh, I tried this one. I've been doing this one for two years and it's second nature now, but someone might, you might make someone's day by sharing that information with them when it's just second handy at this point. Right. And at the, at the same time, it, and it goes for both things, even for working out, uh, because I love to do that as well. Um, you know, what works for me won't necessarily work for you. And that is, but I'll, I'll be more than happy to tell you how I did something right. that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to work for you. But hey, here's a step. Sure. Um, and so I tell people that a lot. Uh, and I'm completely honest. I just let them know like, hey, man, all of this information, this is where I found it. Or, you know, I was searching for this. Here's what I know. But, you know, yeah. let's see if that works for you. And if it does not, here's some other steps for you to, you know, do a search and, and figure this information out and find what actually works for you. 
you um, right. because we all learn differently, you know, and oh, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And now you brought up the children's book and that's why really why you're here ultimately. Yeah. Meaning, meaning to get you here uh, no matter what. But it's funny. I'm scrolling through Facebook and you're always posting podcast stuff, who you're talking to, when you're talking to them, when it's out, where you can listen and wa- or watch clips of it from and stuff like that. And all of a sudden I see your post about something about two bears or one bear in two caves, or or I just it's not it's something out of the ordinary for you to post, right? 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 Uh, where did this whole idea of of writing and getting a children's book published come from? Like, start from the beginning, because I really, for selfish reasons, you're here because I don't even know how this process works. Like, right. I know you probably did all the research, you Googled it. That's how I would start. But I'm interested to see how you come from an idea from something in life to getting it on paper, literally. To, to distribute to other people. Uh, All right. So start from the beginning, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, to start from the beginning, beginning, right? Um, when my daughter, my daughter who is now turning seven, she's my oldest daughter, Alani. Um, she pretty much sparked like everything for me. Um, and before she was born, when I just knew that she was coming into the world, I was also, um, you know, hit with the news that I was pre-diabetic, pre-hypertension. I was over three hundred and fifty pounds. Like I was, it was like crazy. Um, so I would literally like tear up thinking about like her growing up and I'm not around because of the decisions that I made. So that's really the beginning because um, at that point I lost a ton of weight and I, and it sparked something in me to better myself. I was playing video games at the time. I was too focused on spending my money on things that you, to impress people that didn't really matter. We all have a moment like that. We all have it. I did so, that with debt. I was not sorry to cut you off, but I, I know what that moment feels like because uh, I've told the story a million times with the whole zero debt 30 thing mm-hmm. I was doing. So I went to get, a, I was on an airplane with my girlfriend going to or coming back from a, a trip and they came around with the promotion like they do for the cre- credit card for the yeah. sky miles and free trip and money back and all this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that sounds like a good deal. I can go, we can go for a free flight and we can go back on vacation in a few months. Applied for the credit card and got denied. Uh. And I was like, I can't even get a, I can't even get a regular credit card that they're giving out to people on airplanes because my credit's so bad. So something sparked right there where I, I, turned it on and for six months straight all i cared about was paying down debt and i did it and that yeah. feeling i can't you can't even describe that feeling even though i documented it every day in video form and talked about <laughs> it in a thousand different ways i still can't if somebody's never been through it i still can't sit here and, and make them feel what i felt so i know what that spark feels like and i know what to add fuel to that spark feels oh like. yeah yeah that was another thing well th- like i said man i i I did a a whole lot of damage to my life, to my credit uh, before she was born. Um, After I lost the weight, then I started to think of, you know, better things. I was, uh, you know, I was wasting a lot of time, dude. Um, And she was born literally a month before I turned 30. So, you know, I'm already like feeling like everything, like my back's against the wall. Um, So anyway, I got, I I, I lost weight. Um, That put me on uh, a path to where I started looking into uh, more of the motivational stuff, you know, and and really uh, believing in the law of attraction and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, but anyway, I was I was into all of that. I got the idea, like if I wanted to implant a, a thought into someone's head, right? What what is the best time to do that? Do you, do we want to do that for an adult who's already uh, wired a specific sure. way, and we and you know they have to want the change? Um, so I thought, like, let me write a children's book. Um, and I will at that point, you know, at least spark something in a child so that when they grow older, maybe they might look back and say, Hey, it was this book. Maybe they, they might, they may not, but their path would be then determined in a better route. You know what I mean? No, no, I understand. Yeah. So I, I had that idea. And then I started writing a, a children's book, you know, w- about my children, because I, I now have three. I had two at the time. Um, and, and it was more so to help them realize that that their thoughts are things. Mm-hmm. Um, I may go back to that one, but my daughter asked me a very specific question one day when we were riding in the car. She said, Daddy, why do I have two beds? You know, and at that point, she caught me off guard because I've never been asked that, you know, from my daughter because, uh, oh, yeah, to to add that, um, I split up from her mother and, you know, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, that's yeah, big, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I, I, I left the, the I, biggest detail out. I thought maybe it was a transition from from the baby bed 
to the to the adult <laughs> bed, or like she sleeps in your bed and her own bed, so she just stole. The no, idea no, 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 no. Uh, so this is a this is a sep- this is a child with separated. Correct, parents. correct. I have three now. With uh, I have two of them with my current fiance. Uh, her mother, uh, my daughter Alani's mother, and I had split. Okay. Um, two years after she was born, okay. and then at this point, um, I was already with my fiance. Uh, so she asked me, "Daddy, why do I have two beds?" Um, and I and I didn't know how to respond to that really. Um, so I can't even remember the exact answer that I gave her. Um, but I, you know, I, I thought of something quickly and then thought like, man, if I got hit with this question, Mm -hmm. what can I do to help parents, you know, answer this question in in case their kids are, are worried or as a preventative measure, uh, just to, to read a story to them, to help them understand. So, and that's where the idea sparked. Um, and then the process for making the book was, okay. So I, I had no idea how to write a book. I had no idea what the format is. I just know, well, there's a a title and there are pages. So (laughs) all I really (laughs) did was, uh, thought of a title and I worked on that a couple times, um, and just started writing pages thinking, okay, if I was reading a a children's book, how would the pages go? Page one, my name is, you know, Little Bear. And then just kind of kept going until I reached an end. And, you know, it's not like it's going to all come to you. Sure. Um, uh, there There were a lot of times when I would get stumped and I would just put it away for a little bit, come back. And then once I had a, a story that was finished, I would ask people, um, you know, like, you know, obviously like mothers, uh, people who actually read children's books and they would tell me, Hey, like, okay, so simplify that. Oh, great. Okay. So then I had to go back and I had to simplify, simplify. Sure. I simplified it about, uh, two or two to three times. I have everything in my notebook. Right, right, right. Um, and then from there, I would just keep asking like, Hey, what do you think about this now? Oh, and then at the end, it ends in a rhyme. That doesn't really, uh, go well. Everything else looks great. How does that rhyme? Okay. So then I have to go back and I have to think about that. So it was a lot of trial and error, uh, really, um, trusting in individuals, um, that, you know, that are close to me, um, asking them for advice because they read these things on a day-to-day basis to their children. So why not ask them? They're, you know, uh, they're the ones who have to do this. So that was really my process. And then once I had an actual story where people were just like, oh my God, this is great. I even, um, my, my fiance, I didn't let her read it, uh, until it was like pretty much a finished product. And she looked at me and she was like, oh, you have a book. You know what (laughs) I mean? I, okay. And then she read it and she was like, all right, so I'm going to be very honest with you. I, was expecting to read a horrible story because I had the same idea and I quit because it was hard. Yeah. This is actually really good. Wow. You know? Yeah. How, how much is it? How much of it is story and how much of it is lesson? Like, I, I feel like that would be a, a precise mixture of, okay, we, uh, how much can we exaggerate to make this entertaining for kids yeah. versus we should really make them focus on the lesson and the lesson only? So, with the lesson, um, I thought that, I mean, it, you kind of have to hide those lessons a okay. little bit. You know what I mean? So I thought the, the the things that I felt like I wanted a child to take away from this book is I don't want them to focus on the material. So I don't want you to, I, I don't want the kid to think, oh, well, you know, Christmas, I get two gifts. You know, my okay. birthdays, I get all these extra gifts. I didn't want to focus on that at all. Two parties, two exactly. gifts. Exactly. Two parties, two gifts. Uh, the materialistic stuff, I didn't want to focus on that. I wanted to focus on the, um, the, the separate, you know, the... The, the good times uh, with each individual parent. Right. And it was important for me to to do that equally. So, you know, I would list off about four things for, for the mom. I list off about four things for the dad, both separate, uh, but at the same time, great things that I, I figured a child would love. Generally speaking, right? Exactly. Yeah, Generally what, speaking. What you would do with your mom or you would do with your dad or maybe what you, I don't know if you had parents who were separated, but... Yeah, I would typically go to the amusement park with my dad, and but my mom would help me with my homework. Like Correct. just typically speaking, you right. know what I mean? So Right. And I and I um, you know, I also did incorporate some things that I knew about her mother and, you know, mm-hmm. so like I know that she loves animals, so they do have like little 
uh, chickens and stuff. So I added that in there and bedtime stories, you know, with us, I didn't really have my own home. I was living with family at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was always taking her out into the world. So we were, we would go for walks at, you know, like Cobbs Hill sure, and, sure. and do things like that, go to the movies. So, um, so then I threw in there, like we would ride bikes, we'd go to the park, we, you know, we'd go on adventures. Was um, it, was it tempting to make dad more fun than mom? Come on. It had to be a little tempting. Uh, it, it, a little bit. <laughs> we do laundry with mom and we, <laughs> we go to the movies with dad. <laughs> um, it wasn't, it wasn't a major focus for no, me. No, I just, just no, 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 I know. Um, cause someone else did ask me that um yeah uh one of one of my bosses i let him read it and he was saying oh this seems like it's a little bit favoritism. Uh, yeah favoritism <laughs> leaning more towards one side or the other uh but no it was um you know i just wanted to keep it as even yeah, the right thing uh, to do. as wholesome um you know i didn't even give the bear a gender uh because i wanted more kids to connect with it and sure. i didn't want them to feel like you know they were excluded um so there were a lot of ideas and thoughts um, from the basis of just like if I were a child, you know, would this you know, would this exclude me? Would I feel excluded for this? So I even um, like if you notice the, the bears, like the mother is a, a a lighter brown than the dad is, you know, and just because I wanted everyone to sure. to, to pick this up and pick it up for their child. And um, just to let you know out there, too, 50 uh, percent of families, uh, you know, witness a divorce. So there's a lot. And even if your child isn't, you know, isn't living in a home uh, where divorce, you know, where, where the family is divorced they're still going to have a family member a friend uh, right. who who is dealing with that so it's good to give them that knowledge um i experienced that with my fiance her uh, her nieces and nephews their you know their parents are happily married and they were asking the questions like oh what well you know why does alani have to go with her what do you mean like she's going with her mom on the same day. exactly yeah, like yeah. why can't why isn't she here now um so you know it helps them understand too if they have someone that's close to them right um that you know is dealing with that and they it, it just helps them all understand it's a it's a nice little story to help it's not very long it's about uh 20 24 pages um, so yeah, that, that was pretty much from start to beginning, uh, from beginning to end well, how everything happened. What about like uh, illustration? How does that work? You, oh, you, the you, illustration. So if you, that write, was... you write the story, I imagine you type it up on like a laptop or a phone mm -hmm. or an iPad, just the words, literally yep. just the words. And then eventually it has to get illustrated unless Correct. you're an illustrator yourself. No, 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 no. Um, I did reach out to, uh, some people that I knew that illustrated and, you know, um, either, like my brother is a tattoo artist, so I went to him first, but you Makes know, sense. he's he's tattooing, so he can't <laughs> yeah. really uh, devote that time. So then what I did find after, you know, searching for all of this and wondering like, oh, do I, you know, split the proceeds? How does this all work? Uh, someone introduced me to a uh, an app. I was uh, just, I was going to make that joke. There's yes. got to be an app to get a whole book. Correct. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> uh, Fiverr. Oh, yeah, Have you yeah, ever yeah. used Fiverr? Fiverr it's, uh, they actually do sponsor a lot of YouTube videos and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So Fiverr is with two R's, right? And yes. Where you could pay $5 all the way up to whatever to get anything done really digitally. Correct. Digitally, right. Um, well, what I found was that Fiverr is huge. So I paid for someone to professionally edit my, uh, you know, my children's book and and suggest some changes, mm -hmm. um, like five bucks for that. Uh, I then went to an illustrator on there. You can look up any kind of there's a ton of illustrators on there and it's a one time deal you pay the one one off right. price and now it's all yours um so i i found that i found a, a horrible illustrator at first <laughs> i i really was i think i was uh getting duped and i didn't know how to go about it and i'm looking at people and i'm telling them like yo look at this drawing like something seems so off you thought you were like getting pranked pranked oh, not dude, like not like scammed pranked dude uh, yeah <laughs> that's exactly how i felt cuz it was like really cookie cutter and then um and then Fiverr was great. They ended up uh, like banning the person and they, they refunded me my money because oh, because how it happened uh, or how it works is you pay half up front. They provide a storyboard, make any changes that you need is just all outline. And then when you OK that, you pay the rest and then they, they do okay. the coloring. Um, so I found that out and I'm like, oh, my God, like this is great. Um, so that took some time. Obviously, it's going to take some time for that. Um, and then uh, after it was done, I'm like, well, OK. Where do I how, like? How do I get this published? Um, so then I found out about. I, I looked into that, um, and I found that a Amazon has a dope like 
self-publishing uh, portion to their website called wow. KDP. What is it? KDP. KDP. Yep. Uh, Kindle Direct Publishing. Oh, cool. So, um, and what what they do is you pay nothing up front. You provide everything to their specifications, and then uh, they release the book for you. As soon as someone goes to order it, if they order a print version, uh, it, they will print it and then uh, deliver it directly from their uh, from their warehouse. That's like our T-shirts that are now available. This is a perfect time for a, a little ad. Yeah. Rochesterpodcast.com slash store. We have uh, sweatshirts, T-shirts, leggings, uh, coffee mugs, stuff like that, and full transparency. For example, I think I sold 16 items. Yeah. I think I made $46. Oh, Because awesome. you could set your own price, and I wanted people to represent. You know, yeah. they, they, if I could, if I only make $3 or $5 a shirt, it's perfectly fine with me. But um, anyway, it's through a website called Teespring. So rochesterpodcast.com slash store. You click the button right there, and you could order, like I said, shirts, uh, sweatshirts, mugs, and Throughout the coming weeks, we'll put some more stuff up, but appreciate the support. So check that out and uh, yeah. represent. Support Rochester. local, man. Yeah. Support local. Rochester Podcast Network. <laughs> um, so same deal. Basically. So same deal. So no out cost up front. They just take a they take a portion. Yep. Yep. Um, so uh, again, full transparency. Like the book uh, retails for uh, nine ninety nine. I get maybe like three bucks a book, um, which isn't bad, but you can set your own price. And you know, right. if it was nineteen ninety nine, they their price stays the same basically. Yeah. Well, you set it. You can. Set that's you what can, I mean. Yeah. Do they get a do they get a, a, a dollar amount or a percentage? So a say your percentage, book, okay. I believe. Oh, yeah. it's a percentage. Okay. Yeah. Because in, in this t-shirt website, if I sold shirts for $150, mm -hmm. they still only want their 14 bucks for the shirt. They don't care what I sell it for. Gotcha. Okay. So I don't so yeah, I'm just curious about that. It doesn't matter. $9.99 for a yeah. book. Yeah. Yeah. $9.99 for a book. It's uh and then you can set like a Kindle price and stuff because it is available on Kindle. Oh, cool. And um and I believe if you have certain dimensions, um, you can also uh select an option for a bigger distributor so then you can then be at you know Barnes and Noble and whatever whoever's a part of their um you know their little package there I'm not I'm not diminishing your accomplishment here but thinking about writing a book getting it published and getting it sold to people mm -hmm. you think this is you know ten, five, ten 5 10 years <clears throat> of work and process and meetings and trying to talk to publishers and negotiations and deals and that you use an app and Amazon correct after yep. you of course put your creativity on paper that's the process that's the real magic there but if you're inspired to do anything like this, right, any kind of book, a children's book or anything, mm -hmm. these tools are at our disposal. There's really no excuse. Like, None. get it done. None. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at one point, I'm pretty sure that's, you know, that was the process, you know, finding a publishing agent, which I did research that as well. Uh, to get to a publisher, you have to, um, you know, you have to look for a publishing agent. To to look for a publishing agent, you have to have this, this document that's just, you know, to and the also, T. They have to buy it. Right? Don't yeah. they, they have to like your idea? Correct. They, your idea could be correct. crap if you know it. You know, according to everybody but you, but you could still get your stuff out there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So you're not at the mercy of a human. You, like if you have if you have this idea and want this opportunity, it's there. It's done. Well, you know what? And um, not only that, but just like uh, I mean, the same thing goes with the podcasting, right? Where right. we do it, we figure things out. After, you know, however long, uh, you know, of just repeating the process, sure. fine tuning, yeah. um, when you can produce numbers, someone can take a look at that and say, hey, we want to buy this. So it's the same thing with a book. Uh, oh, okay. That's what I found out where, you know, I'm putting it out there, you know, through through Amazon. But if I hit a certain amount of numbers, if I if I reach their number one spot, then I have the opportunity where someone could take a look at this, like a publisher and say, hey, we can see that you're doing this amazing job self-publishing this book. We would like to, you know, buy you the, the rights to it um, and then publish it through us and then, you know, fine tune it this way. So you still have that opportunity. What, what would be a lot of a lot of copies like to say, oh, my God, I mean, not monetarily, but to get in the top 10 spot in Amazon. Are you selling tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands or just hundreds of copies or dozens or how does it? Yeah, I think I think really um again like uh, it's very similar to podcasting where if we if we reach that, you know, if, if enough people review, I, I don't think they quite understand that 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 helps us a lot. So in po oh yeah, in podcasting. Very, yep, in, in in podcasting uh same thing with Amazon. So if they review and they rate it, um if I get enough five-star reviews, then that puts it on the top of a list. 
you know, and that is the that is the money maker right there. Um, I can shop it around possibly and say like, okay, hey, I sold ten thousand copies of this book, um, and this is just me myself. Uh, then they'll look at that and they'll take right. you know, and then they'll they'll take that and they go, well, well, you did that yourself. Oh, awesome, yeah. With we, our tools and our correct, right, correct um, our marketing budget and stuff like that, we could turn that into a hundred thousand. Right. Easily, easily. Very cool. You just have to produce some numbers, and then they'll they'll believe in you in that sense. If not, then you have to write up everything like to a T. You have to find yourself a publishing agent who then takes a percentage of whatever you know the publisher decides is your your royalty. Um, so then they give you an advance on that. You, uh, you know, it, it's you, a lot. You could always. I'm sure you thought of this, but you could. You should find. I'm sure there's a million Instagram accounts out there where there's moms reading reviewing children's toys or talking about being a mom. I think there's one here in Rochester. I think of a friend who his sister or his sister-in-law or something is a successful, I think they review like diapers or, or something, something with children. Just find one of those accounts. Yeah. Nothing too, Gary V talks about this all the time. Nothing too high. You don't need a 10 million follower account. You got to get somebody with 50,000, 100,000 followers and yeah. say, hey, can I send you my book and maybe give you a hundred bucks? Can you read it on Instagram in a 15 second video? And then, you know what I mean? Like yeah. guerrilla market like that. Mm -hmm. Get find, You got to search around for the right accounts, especially locally. I'm sure there's somebody with 25, 30, 40, 50,000 followers that you could buy almost an endorsement with them. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's a that's another research to do <laughs> well, yeah. uh, to try to figure all that stuff out. Um, but no, that yeah, that's a great idea. It's it's it like right now I have a friend of mine, um, you know, we work closely together and um, he's just going to produce a couple photos for me. Very yes, cool. I'm going to be reaching out to to people like, hey, would you you know, would you like to read this? I have uh, I joined a bunch of um, groups on Facebook, uh, you know, that are yeah. publishers, illustrators, uh, just everyone working together um, kind of as a community. I mean, there's a lot of bull in there, too. But um, if you could sift through all of that, I mean, there's a lot of good tips everywhere now. The Internet has changed it's, it's, everything for no everyone. Excuse. There is no excuse. No excuse no. whatsoever. The book is called One Bear, Two Caves. Little Bears, Two Caves. Little Bears, Two Caves. Excuse me. My favorite podcast is called Two Bears, One Cave. <laughs> yeah. And every time I see your book, I my brain gets scrambled. Yeah. No, it is not about Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer. <laughs> it's like when me. I used to spell <laughs> dose. Instead of does in yeah, school, yeah, yeah. I can't get past that. So I'm very sorry. We just talked about it for half an hour. <laughs> Little You're Bear, fine. Two Caves. Yes. And I just I purchased mine on Amazon. $9.99. I will be leaving a review. I, uh, I appreciate that, bro. I might hold on to it till we have kids. I might give it to a friend who just had a baby yeah. and buy another copy when, when the time comes around. But we have 1,500 views usually on each episode of the show. It's awesome. been fluctuating because of the... Uh, you know, COVID-19 is nothing oh, yeah. really to talk about. Let's just, yeah. oh, I'm happy. I can't believe I just sat with someone for half an hour and did not mention coronavirus. <laughs> I think that's the first time in a month that I've done that. Yeah, Pretty, I know. That, that felt it's, good. It's 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 tough to not bring it up. Right. Um, I, I tend to ask people just, hey, how, how are things? You know, right. that that's how I word it. Um, because I'm the same way, dude. Like, I mean, obviously it's a, it, it's a bad situation for everyone. But at the same time, um, I'm very big on, you know what? Let's focus on the positive sure. stuff. Let's focus on ourselves. Let's focus on our health. Let's focus on the things that we can focus on. Let's get productive during this time. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you know, if we get it, then we have to deal with that ourselves. But for now, right. let's be productive. I agree. Well, like a little bear, two caves. Joaquin Figueroa. Yes, Joaquin Damn. Figueroa. Check that out. Got it. <laughs> uh, 1,500 people watch this show uh, every week. Uh, if I'm doing a solo show, it goes down to th three to 500. My point is, this is a Rochester project from a Rochester guy trying to affect families all over the world. Uh, if you've got 10 bucks to support, please do. Um, the, the Amazon link, we could probably put it in the description. Um, if not, we'll put it in the comments somewhere within this video after you're done watching it, it'll be above me, below me, whatever, uh, to click the link and check out the book, buy it, review it, please review it. It's just as important as please. buying it. If not more, Joaquin, thank you so much. Congratulations. It's a huge accomplishment from conception to actually getting it out there. It's, it's, it'll never not be impressive to me. So I hey, really man. appreciate the time. I hope your family's doing great. I hope everybody's healthy and staying safe and practicing social distancing and, and doing what they can to to flatten the curve and, and get the country back to where it was, if not better. Brother, we're all doing great. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. I, I see you doing a lot of great things as well. You know, you keep uh, improving what you're doing. And I'm just somebody that just, you know, 
I have an idea and I do it. So, so it. all of this stuff just, you know, impresses me and, and uh, gives me motivation to strive for more. So, and guys, please tune into the Asylum podcast as well as Insensitive Culture if you like pop culture stuff. All right, we'll see you on the next one. Stay healthy, stay Sweet. safe, and uh, be good to yourselves. Someone